a few days ago I showed my Remington 788 and 222 Remington on a video that was an unboxing of a package from Broke Loader and I talked a little bit about Remington 788s and since then a local gun shop popped up on their used gun listings three Remington 788s one in 222 one in 6 millimeter Remington and one in 308 Winchester uh, the 308 Winchester sold pretty quickly. I already have a 788 and 308 Winchester, and so I decided to go down and take a look at the other two. Um, the 222 had sold by the time that I got there, so I didn't get a look at it, but this one I brought home with me. This is a Remington 788 in 6 millimeter Remington. Uh, it's got uh, weaver bases, just like my other two 788s came with, uh, weaver rings, and uh, the scope is a made in China something or other. I'm not sure of the brand. It uh, appears to be a fixed 4x32. Let's screw a cap off. I'm not sure of the brand, but I don't see any other markings on it that would indicate what it is. Maybe on the bottom. I'll take a look here real quick. But I just got it home after a day of uh, visiting gun stores and I haven't even taken this little uh, nylon loop off from the price tag yet, so I'll clip that off first. Like uh, the 222, the magazine's the single stack, 6mm Remington, small slit in the bottom. Uh, everything is relatively straight on the rifle. Uh, both sights have been removed, the front sight has been removed. Uh, it doesn't have a plug screw in there, it's just a plain hole. Um, the rear sight's been removed, it does have plug screws in it. Um, pretty typical of a 788. This one does not have the inlet floor plate. It's just the sheet metal floor plate. A um, few marks in the stock. It's not terrible. Uh, the price wasn't too bad. Uh, more or less to me an unremarkable Remington 788. I really didn't have a... Uh, I don't have a 6mm Remington other than this one. So I mean it fills a caliber void but uh, you know it's a very typical 788 but the thing that did catch my attention is I ran the bolt at the store and looked at it and everything's really good. I closed the bolt and I tested the trigger and it has got a marvelous trigger on it. And so the first thing I did is I rolled it up and looked at the bottom and I see there's an adjusting screw here that is a Allen screw and I have a, a wide trigger shoe that is marked CH like CH products which is pretty typical for the day. Um, it's a pinned on trigger so a trigger shoe so um I have a pretty good idea what this trigger is um, there are really only that I know of two aftermarket triggers for Remington 788s of course you can still buy a Timney trigger for the Remington 788 I have one installed on my 308 and I was going to purchase one for my 222 and then in the old days there was a Kanjar trigger for 788s I have a sneaking suspicion that this may be a Kanjar trigger the price of the rifle uh, was commensurate with a stock Remington 788 in this condition. Um, the trigger, if it is what I'm hoping it is, is a real bonus. It, uh, in my eyes, it doubles the value of the rifle. And uh, if it is what I believe it is, I will remove it from this rifle and I will install it in my 222. So let's take a look at what we have. We'll take the floor plate off the rifle and, and get a look at it. Um, the one thing that is going to be a bit of a challenge, um, I think. I think it will, I'm not sure about the width of the trigger shoe here. Um, it's wider than the slot in the um, in the floor plate. So I don't know if you can rotate the floor plate 90 degrees and fish it off of there or if I'm going to have to drive out the pin on the shoe to get it through the floor plate. Uh, that's yet to be seen. 788s take down very easy. There's two guard screws, a front one and a rear one that screw into the receiver. Of course it's a typical, you know, the rear tang, if you will, of the 788 is very similar to a 700. The rear guard screw just screws into it and then the front obviously goes into the bottom of the of the action tube in the front. Um, so let's uh, get it on the gun vise and uh, find a screwdriver bit that fits the screws and see if we can get it taken down. gun vise that my dad made and was given to me. I use it quite frequently. So let's, uh, let's first take the bolt out. 
Now normally on a 788 the bolt release is you push the safety forward. So I don't know if we can see here what I'm doing with the camera at the angle that I'm at. So I'll push the safety forward and indeed the bolt came right out. Set this upside down in the vise. Put a little padding on that before I clamp down on it. Okay, so I got plenty of screwdriver bits. We got the small screw in the middle of the floor plate to grab first. Seems like I would write a note of what screw bits fit what and keep reference so I didn't have to try every time and it would get closer when I start. We'll twist that out, and that's just a wood screw that holds the center of the floor plate down. These are just a stamped piece of steel floor plate. It's very thin on the order of a sixteenth or so. And let's see what we have that'll fit the guard screws here. That's a little too small. Maybe something in this set's a little more appropriate. That's a pretty good fit in the slot. It's not bad. Let's see, this one here might be better. That's a little loose fit. Let's go with this one that I have in my hand. Hopefully this don't have too much tension on them. They'll come right out. The trigger guard is also a separate stamped steel piece that just loops into the bottom of the steel floor plate. It's coming out real nicely. So this front screw, let me slide the vise back this way a little bit. You can see the front guard screw. Yep, that bit's a good fit. Yep, not much torque on there. Oh no, the action's trying to come loose, so we'll hold on to it because I don't know what's going to happen with this trigger shoe through this slit in the rear. So what I will do is I'll keep the front guard screw in there just lightly. And I'm going to move the bolt out of the way down here. And what I will do is put a couple rags underneath this scope just to keep things from falling out. And if I should pad this up, then the action will kind of stay balanced under the stock there while I work on this rear screw. And once I get the rear screw out, I'll be able to take the trigger guard out. The rear guard screw goes through the tail end of the trigger guard and then on into the action. So this just tips up like this, and it's just keyed into this little slot so it comes right apart. That trigger, is the shoe is very wide. I think I'm probably going to have to tap that pin out in order to get this apart all the way. I may be able to just fish things around enough to get a look at what's going on inside though. So yeah, that's going to be pretty tight. So I'm going to take this off the gun vise here real quick, stand it up where I can work on it a little easily, make sure I don't bump anything up top like I always do. Yeah, it's pretty clear to me that I'm going to have to tap this, uh, tap this trigger shoe off. It's just a pin that's tapped into there, so just to temporarily hold things together I'll slip the front guard screw back in with just a little bit of tension on it. Yeah, that might be the rear one. Nope, that was the right one. That'll hold things together while I take a look at this. There we go. So, what I'm going to have to do is to find the right tool to tap that pin out. And I'll have to come up with a block to support the trigger shoe while I tap that out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get things set up. I'll stop the camera while I find the tools and get a setup together to tap that out of there. Okay, I'm back. I've got a setup here so that I can attempt to tap this pin out of the trigger shoe. I've got the rifle on the bench. I've got a couple of felt pads underneath the buttstock and underneath the fore end up here. You can't see that on the camera. 
I've got another felt pad beneath the receiver here, a felt pad on the top, and then a clamp and a load spreader to hold this firmly to the bench while I tap on it. I've got an oak block and a piece of phenolic board beneath the trigger to support the trigger shoe as I tap on the pin. So I've got a small hammer and a punch. Let's see if I can tap that pin out. Yep, it moved. Moved again. Moved again. There it goes. It shot right out the bottom, I think. My block is uh, touching just a little bit, so if I move that block, I should be good. There we go, the pin is out. So there's the trigger shoe. The trigger shoe is out, the pin is still captured in the back side. So that came out real easily, no problems there. It is indeed... I thought that was a CH mark, I'm not real sure. It, it looks like it says... Definitely looks like a... Looks like a letter H inside of a circle with letter C's and whatnot, but I'm not sure what the what the logo is, but we'll go ahead and continue to take the rifle apart here. I'll uh, remove the clamp. Okay, now we're free. Remove the plywood. Got the felt pads. Put the punches away. Put the hammer away. The wood block away. Alright, so I'll get the rifle vise back out again. back in the vise. I don't need to be very tight here, just enough to hold things stable while I finish. Now I'll just hold upward action on the action, upward pressure on the action while I remove the front guard screw. Whoever turned the screws out before wasn't quite as careful with them as I am. You can see that in this trigger there's also a spring here the shoe is there. And we'll slip the stock off now. It looks like they clearanced the stock a little bit in the back. Probably when they put the aftermarket trigger in, it probably needed a little more room than was available. So the barrel's going to stay there fine, and I'll move this stock over to this side. And let's take a look at what we have with this trigger. M.H. Canjar. Denver, Colorado. So it is indeed a Kanjar trigger on this Remington 788. So sometimes you get lucky. You buy just a garden variety rifle. And you can see the finish on the barrel here is it's kind of, you know, the Remington 788s were not the high polish that some of the higher end models were, but to me, this rifle was worth every cent that I paid for it just to get that trigger. Now on a 788, the trigger's mount to a stub on the bottom of the receiver so uh, you have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing there's a pin that goes through there there's a there's a lug on the bottom of the receiver tube and there's a cross pin and then the screw in the front adds tension against that pin to hold everything in place and we we do have a, a good working safety here I tested that before I disassembled the rifle and then this rod right here that's actually the bolt release so when you push the the, at the uh, safety all the way forward you can see that that pin comes down and that's your bolt release and then of course the sear just sticks up through the tube in the tail end of the receiver there so I'm very pleased I have a Kanjar trigger for a 788 now um, I guess this is somewhat of a donor rifle at this point I do have spare parts for 788s I do have a spare factory trigger assembly that I could put on this rifle or I certainly don't have a problem buying another Timney and putting on this rifle um, I think a lot of this, uh, you know, dull finish on the rifle, it's, it's, you know, it's typical old rifle, not polished, inexpensive 788. I think that if I very carefully clean it, I, it'll look pretty doggone good. Um, but for right now, I think I'm going to um, 
remove the can jar trigger from this six millimeter Remington and uh, work on getting it uh, fit to my Remington 788 that's a 222. Um, I'm really excited about this. As soon as I felt that trigger, I, I knew it was a good one, and I'm very pleased that it's a, that it's a can jar. So um, we'll get it removed from this rifle and get it installed on the other one. So thanks, everybody, for watching.